Welcome back. Twitter is ready to throw down in court over Elon Musk's abandoned promise to buy the social media giant, and they've got a stable full of legal talent chomping at the bit. Joining me to discuss the case is David Latt. He's a lawyer and author of his own Substack, Original Jurisdiction. David, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Katie. So you described this case as epic in your recent newsletter. So before we dive into who's who, tell us a little bit about the case and why you think this is really setting up to be something epic. Well, this is the biggest corporate law dispute, I think, in history, really. Uh, Twitter, the social media giant, is trying to force Elon Musk, the richest man in the world, to go through with his agreement to buy Twitter for $44 billion. So this is a $44 billion case, if you want to think of it that way. Expensive. So instead of the Real Housewives of Potomac, this is really like real lawyers of the Delaware Chancery Court, right? So you talk about who's who on both sides, big names. Let's dive in. Who is Twitter bringing to the table here? So Twitter has three different law firms. Uh, Wilson Sonsini, which is a top Silicon Valley firm, Simpson Thatcher, which is a top New York law firm, and Wachtell Lipton, who they just brought in for purposes of filing this lawsuit on Tuesday against Elon Musk. Wachtell is arguably the number one law firm for mergers and acquisitions work, and they have a track record of getting companies to follow through on promises to buy other companies when those companies try to back out. So Twitter has a very impressive array of talent, something like, I don't know, a lot of Supreme Court clerks on this one, uh, a lot of brain power on the Twitter team. And then Elon Musk has who going to bat for him? So Elon Musk uh, also has a legal dream team of his own. He has Skadden Arps, which is, again, one of the top uh, M&A or mergers and acquisitions firms in the country. And he has Quinn Emanuel, which is a leading litigation firm. And his two lawyers from Quinn Emanuel, Andrew Rossman and Alex Spiro, are no strangers to high stakes battles. Uh, Alex uh, Spiro has represented Elon Musk in a defamation suit when uh, Elon uh, was accused of uh, calling uh, someone involved in the Thai cave rescue a pedophile. Uh, Alex got him out of that trouble. Um, Alex uh, Spiro also has clients like Jay Z and uh, various billionaires, and it seems half the NBA. So Elon Musk also has some heavy, heavy hitters on his side. Yeah, the previous win on behalf of Elon Musk in that tweet case about uh, the pedo guy is, um, I'm sure, a win in his column for coming back again to go to bat for him. In this case, they're trying to move really quickly here, right? They're asking for a trial in September. The judge, I believe, has already said, well, let's go ahead and chat in July and talk about whether that's actually going to happen. What do you estimate happens next? Do you think we're barreling toward a trial in September? Yes. Uh, Delaware Chancery has a so-called rocket docket. They move cases really quickly. And you can see why. You have billions of dollars on the line. You have thousands of jobs on the line, these major Fortune 500 companies. And you can't have them lingering in uncertainty for years, which is often how normal litigation uh, takes in terms of how long to get processed. So I expect we will see a trial very, very promptly. And I made a joke about the real lawyers of the Delaware Chancery Court, but that's not necessarily a court that's well known across the country. It's called the Delaware Chancery Court. But can you just describe a little bit for us what that court is? It sounds British almost, Chancery, but what, what is that court? <laughs> It is sort of an inheritance of our Anglo-American legal tradition. The Delaware Chancery Court is a very old court, more than 100 years old, and it hears some of the biggest corporate law disputes of our time. And one thing that's different about Chancery compared to other courts is most other courts, if you lose, you have to pay the other side money. Delaware Chancery Court is a court of equity, uh, so to speak, and that means that it can also force you to do very specific things, like go through a deal that you're trying to walk away from, which is what Musk is trying to do with Twitter. So Delaware Chancery does have this power to order him to go through with the deal if they decide that that is what is justified under the law, and they have not hesitated to use it in the past. And do you have any uh, insight? What do you think is actually going to happen at the end of the day? You think they force the deal? 
That would be my guess if you force me to bet on this. The agreement, the merger agreement that Elon Musk and Twitter signed actually specifically references this legal remedy of so-called specific performance, which is the technical term for going through with the deal. And the parties envisioned that this might happen. So I think there's a very good chance that either he's forced to do the deal or if he walks away from the deal, he has to pay Twitter a lot of money. There is a $1 billion breakup fee in the agreement for a situation where, say, his financing falls through. But that is really for a situation where financing financing falls through. If his financing doesn't fall through, and you know he's a billionaire many times over thanks to his Tesla stock, um, he could end up paying a lot more than a billion dollars to try and get out of this deal. So, uh, But look, Elon Musk is one of the most unpredictable people on the planet. Right. Who knows how this is going to go? I would not bet a lot of money of my own on how this is going to come out. Well, you heard it here. David Lapp predicting the deal will go through or it'll be pricey if it doesn't. Lawyer and author David Lapp, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me.